Straight from the top. Straight from the top. Whatever you want, brother. It's your world. It's my world? You're the champion. <laughs> you said it. Start the show. <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, a Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. New Heights is a show that does not remember coming back to Kansas City, but we're here now, (laughs) and we are still brought to you by our friends at Fireball, the undisputed pound for pound, number one shot in the country. That's Cinnamon Delight. I hope you guys enjoyed the Wednesday before the Super Bowl. That was the New Heights pre-party during the week that was presented by Fireball that we were not able to make because we were getting ready for a game. We hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, A lot of my friends went and said they enjoyed it. I wanted to go. Really did. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles Center. He's pretty damn good. Uh, Five all pros. I, we get it. I know you're trying to pump me up. Just this finish guy, the open. <laughs> this I don't guy need has done your... so much in his entire career. New Heights comes to you every single Wednesday. We're not sure exactly if it's going to come to you next Wednesday, but we'll talk about that later. Subscribe on YouTube, though, and wherever you get your podcast, and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show. That's with one S. Jason, what we got coming up, brother? Well, we got one thing to talk about, Trav, and that is... Uh, The NFL script writers finally letting down the Philadelphia Eagles. (laughs) Damn, man. Uh, The old script writers. Yeah. Jokes aside, this should be an incredible episode. We're going to go into the experience of playing against each other in the Super Bowl. What we said after the game. Yeah. What we really said. Trav is going to reveal his choice for the fan base name. So get ready, boys and girls. We're we're actually doing this. We're doing it. We're actually going to make a decision. Took us long enough. We've been on the fence for uh, the entire season, yeah. and we're finally going to do this. All right now. We're also going to talk a little bit about what comes next after the season. Yep. But first, as always, new news. New news. Still the number one sports podcast in the world. <laughs> and I got to say, all of you guys tuning in over the past couple weeks during the Super Bowl, man, this thing's taking off. Yeah, we are now just... top five in overall podcasts on Apple and Spotify. Both of them. Top five, um, top five. As we come to the end of the football season, uh, we just want to shout out all you guys. It's been shout an incredible out. year uh, for both Travis and I. It's been Man. one of the most fun years of both of our careers. Probably Travis's most fun year. Man. Um, it was truly remarkable how much all of you guys supported this and enjoyed it. So thank you for tuning in each and every week. In just one football season, we have amassed... Almost 900,000 followers on TikTok. Damn. Over 300,000 followers on Instagram. Damn, it took me like a half a career to get that. And over 500,000 followers on YouTube. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty that's good. a pretty good run. It's pretty for, good. We for, appreciate you guys. Yeah, not, even, not, be, not even a full year in. You know, I'll take those numbers. Uh, we also are finalists for a dig, Digiday Digiday. Award. Digiday, <laughs> which is best original programming, um, the best original programming Digiday. We're the best. Um, hey, how about that? All right, now maybe I can win something. <laughs> maybe here we go. Yeah. Man, we can win something loud. together this time. Somebody, oh my gosh, <laughs> the Eagles aren't going to take this one from me. <laughs> we got. Wait, uh, this is who we're up against. These these are the enemies of this uh, matchup. We got Hulu, uh, the entire company. That's going to be a tough one. That's a good tough matchup. That's a big conglomeration. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I, I feel like that is a lot to try and go up against. But I mean, yeah, we're going up against Disney. We're top five. We're top five. The mouse is undefeated. Top five. Top five. Uh, <laughs> also up against in the know, Lad Bible, L A D Bible Group, uh, Net App TV. Uh, what's What's the future? And then we're also up against South China Morning Post. Man, I didn't. I've never heard of the South so. China. Morning Post, but uh, that's going to be tough to beat, too. What would be the difference from North China and South China? Like, where's the... Well, North is North and South is South. But of what? Of the country. <laughs> What's deciding? Is there a lake? Yeah, I don't know. What's What decides the North and the South of the United States? I the always... Mason-Dixon line. Mason-Dixon line, right? But there's a lot more South of the Mason-Dixon line than there is North. Yeah. Is Texas part of the South? Uh, yeah, I'm considering it south. That's like the last state westward. 
Is the South only indicative of things east of the Mississippi? We already went through this. Indicative. I N. I just saw it on the post. I don't even know if that's the right word. To be honest with you. I. It's, I always get stuck with the Q. I've always, you know, what 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 do we call? Them? Anyways, so I don't know what uh, constitutes South China. But they do have a morning post. Moving on to fan mentions of the week, the Kelsey Bowl edition. Uh, our NFL peers, including one of our favorite guys, Pat McAfee of the Pat McAfee Show, gave us an electric pregame shout out. Uh, everybody was on Radio Row and uh, our team. Our team was on Radio Row asking people yep. to kind of give us a, a shout and, um, and say a few words. Pat McAfee, awesome. absolutely electric. Every yeah, single time I mean, he gets... He gets you want to talk about cutting a electric. promo. I don't know that anybody's good at, as good at cutting promos as Pat McAfee. The two greatest football players at two different positions that are incredibly vital to the success of a football team running into each other in the middle of the desert at Super Bowl 57 is a story that even the movies couldn't create. Do you, you want to know what my favorite one is, though? Which one? The draft day. When he got up there and he, yeah. he got, oh, my gosh. He announced the Colts draft pick. Mm-hmm. When it was yeah. the draft was in Indianapolis, man, in that Indy. was electric. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it made you me guys think do it like better if, than Pat. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's actually been in the WWE. No, as yeah, an announcer and a wrestler. Yeah, he so, does it. He does it yeah. all. Yeah, this guy is unbelievable. Army Swiss knife, man. Army Swiss knife. Is that what it is? Swiss army. Swiss knife. army knife. <laughs> I don't know that it matters. The order of operations. It's fine. <laughs> Fuck. I would say I don't play with knives, but I actually I got in trouble for doing that one. Dude, time. what is it about knives that make them so fun to play with? Ah, oh, fuck, sharp objects, man. Do you remember that when we were throwing the kitchen knife? We up in the air. Was it we me? Were? It was just me. <laughs> it was you. And we were throwing it up and just letting it stick in the ground. We should have let mom tell and the then, story. This is her favorite. Yeah, story you're right. Though. She loves this story. He's Love. got a knife. <laughs> There's a woman down across the street <laughs> screaming. He's got a knife, and mom is upstairs changing, trying to get ready for work or a, a, like a di- like a work dinner. And yeah. um, she comes flying out in her underwear, trying to get the knife out of Jason's hand. Knives are cool, man. There's something about a knife. Keep them away from kids. Obviously, oh, but, man, man, I brought yeah. Don't yeah. I brought one to school when I was in like fourth or fifth grade. A little pocket knife. I knew where my dad hid his uh, his ex his like change, and I went into the drawer where he hides his change to get some change to go to the store, get some candy. Saw the pocket knife, immediately got excited. Grabbed the pocket knife, was playing with the pocket knife, forgot all about the candy. Took it into school, showed my friend Joey Porter. Joey Porter, shout out to Joey Porter, Cleveland Heights. Joey told he, he told, told the teachers he's he a snitch. Teachers, Joey. Yeah. Good job, Joey, but bad job. Yeah. Probably you can't have kids definitely with knives. Good job telling. Teachers, good yeah. job telling, but nobody likes well, a snitch, Joey. What about samurai sword? Would you ever do a samurai sword? I'm not a big weapon guy, man. I get too drunk. <laughs> Weapons and drinking do not. They don't. Yeah, that's go, a good point. They don't go well together. I'd rather just keep it keep it cordial. Should not play with a samurai sword when drunk. I think that's good. It's good life advice. Got to know your boundaries, man. Yeah. Moving on, no. TikTok. <laughs> On TikTok, Eve Hellerick. Eve Hellerick. Eve yeah, Hellerick. You're on your own on that one. You're on your own on that one. Longtime Chiefs Eagles fan creates a tie dye homemade Kelsey Bowl sweatsuit, and it Ooh. is pretty smooth. She went half and half. She went right I down remember the seeing this one. Yeah, Whoop. she killed it. Red on one side, green on the other. Mama Kels had one of those during the game. She had a little, uh, she had a jean jacket like that made. Went half and half, was repping both squads. And finally, from Marie Thresher, who emailed us saying, I'm a local Philadelphia artist and New Heights podcast fan. After listening to the top five bowl segment uh, in episode 25, I was inspired to sculpt an actual Kelsey bowl made out of clay. Look at that. It can be a consolation prize, she says, for uh, the brother who needs a hearty bowl of unlucky charms after the game. That was pretty oh smooth gosh. how she brought that together. I love this. And honestly, and this is an amazing piece of art. She's yeah, got it down to a T. Yeah, is it, I don't know if it's Marie or Mary, but um, either one, I love this. I don't know if you know, Trav, I'm actually into pottery. Are you into pottery? I, I've i done a few pottery I think it's classes. cool. I You've think, done, done some? A, yeah. Dude, I've always wanted to try it, and this is really cool. I don't. How do you get that much detail? I just, yeah, there? no, that is, that's that's pottery mixed with an, like an actual, like somebody who actually knows how to like draw, 
because yeah. there's a lot of detail in the faces there. And yeah. um, I initially I was like, man, why does why is my face so fat? And I realized you're holding my jersey. That's not me. Like, why would they make my nah, face that bigger makes than sense. yours? Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, like why is, why am I shorter it and looks like she wider got us face? Reversed. <laughs> we should be. I remember this picture now. I know what her inspiration was. So thank For you, sure. Marie or Mary, as Jason would call you. We need you to send this bowl. We need. We do need to. Hopefully, it's done uh, heating up in the oven and is uh, is a beautiful masterpiece. I would love. I would love to see Jason uh, eat a bowl yeah. of Lucky Charms, knowing that he hasn't had one in a long time. Please send it our way, Marie. I would definitely eat a bowl of Lucky Charms out of that. If you're only listening to this episode and want to see the incredible fan art, go ahead and check us out on the show on YouTube. All right. Now on to our first seg. Now on to our. Uh, right, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sometimes if you just smile, it just makes you happy even when you're sad. You gotta chill out, man. Before we get to the rest of the show, if you love daily fantasy, you need to check out our partner, DraftKings. DraftKings. They're giving new customers a free shot at a share of millions in prizes with their first deposit. All new customers need to do is download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. Playing daily fantasy is easy. You just pick from your favorite players each week, enter contests, and win cash prizes weekly. And with a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit, it is the perfect time still to show off your football game. So download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code New Heights. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. You heard the man just enter promo code New Heights to get a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes. <laughs> and that is with your first deposit. That's code New Heights only at DraftKings. Listen, do you ever dream of doing something game-changing? Then Visa can make it happen. It could be running a flanking clinic from your own backyard or getting paid on the spot. Or funding your own blockbuster movie based on your life. All right now. This will make sense if you keep watching. It always does. Or maybe even buying non-toxic Sharpies to Ooh. sign babies' foreheads. I see where you're going. Point is, however you want to change the game, Visa has the power to help. Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. All right now. Last piece of new news, the big game might be over, but Quip knows that the Kelsey competition never ends. <laughs> never. So in, the, in the spirit of this competition, our friends at Quip wanted to find out who the New Heights podcast MVP is, me or Travis. Well, now I'm interested. So here's how it's going to work. You got to go to getquip.com slash MVP to place your vote by using one of these promo codes. That's J Kelsey to vote for Jason or T Kelsey to vote for me. You guys know which one to choose. Either code will automatically get you 20% off any Quip water flosser, Quip toothbrush, or Quip gum starter kit. I got the toothbrush right here. And I'll tell you what, I'm ready to take this thing out the box and brush some teeth. Got the water floss right here. Pick a uh, color, any color. Yeah, I've never used a water flosser, so I'm excited to try this. Um, in addition to getting 20% off any of these great products, whichever one of our promo codes ends up getting the most orders at getquip.com slash MVP, Quip will be donating $10 for every order placed to the Winning Brothers charity of choice. My charity needs that money. All you got to do is go to quip.com slash MVP and uh, vote TKOS for MVP. <laughs> uh Please do not let Travis beat me again. Chill out. Uh, but no matter what, it's going to go to a good cause because whichever brother wins, Quip will be donating $10 for every order placed to either Be Philly or 87 and running. That's 20% off any water flosser, toothbrush, or gum starter kit. Plus a chance to help out a great cause. Uh, get to Quip.com. That's Q-U-I-P dot com slash MVP uh, with code J Kelsey or T Kelsey. And terms and conditions apply. Click the link in the description for full details. Now back to the show. Here we go. Now on to 12-ish bold topics because it's never actually 12. Uh, and we're going to recap the Super Bowl. Uh, it's going to be a little different, though, this week. We're just going to go through the game. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still fucking hammered. Um, this is the team's fault. We're going. How dare they put a word that big in Travis's section? 
<laughs> you guys thought you guys thought me spelling the words were bad. <laughs> me reading the words. We're going to do this a little different this week. We're just going to go through the game in order and give you guys our POV and insight on those moments as they happened. All right. Uh, before we jump into the game, though, overall reactions, man. It's Tuesday after the game, and uh, here we are. How we're feeling? How are we feeling, man? Uh, you know, obviously not good. Uh, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, it was a great game. Yeah, I think it everyone was. can agree with that. Um, that's the kind of game you want to see in the Super Bowl. Both teams playing really well uh you know it was back and forth it was a fun game to be a part of obviously not fun on the outcome for the eagles uh you know wish we would have won the game but both teams played their tails off both teams yeah. played really hard and um for me it's feeling worse to be honest with you as the game gets further away not to be like uh, a downer i'm not trying to be oh, no, debbie I, downer over here but uh no. Explain. You know, after the game, I think I wasn't. I don't know. You lose the game, but you're 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 proud of the way guys fought and the and the way uh, you know the team played. Uh, you just come up just short, but um, you know, as you get further removed, you know, you can't help but you know think about the plays that you know could have been. You know, you, the the you know, there's multiple things throughout the game. You know, you got the you know the um, the third and five where we don't convert in the third quarter, which is largely my doing. We'll get to that in a little bit. There's so many yeah. of these plays. And I mean, I always, not, you're not blaming anything. You're just saying that you can't help but to think no, about. No, this is what you do. This was, is not to be like. This again, is every like, game, too. This is every game, too. It's yeah. just different when it's the last one. Well, you yeah. think about it more when you were so close to winning a world championship. Yeah. And um, not to be melodramatic, but this is part of the grieving process. And uh, it sucks. You know, I don't think I've slept much for multiple reasons, but you're also up thinking about these. You know, if I just would have called this, you know, maybe the game's different. And of course, it doesn't matter. The game's over. And uh, the Chiefs played an unbelievable game. Really, it's it's fucking weird, man. Like, I'm so happy for you. Uh, I'm happy for, like, Andy Reid. And at the same time, it, it sucks. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's how I'm feeling. What about you, Trey? I um I can understand how you feel like that losing a Super Bowl um way worse than uh than you just lost one. And it was kind of the opposite for me. Uh I immediately wanted to forget about absolutely everything. Um yeah. there were way more than just a handful of plays that went wrong in that game uh in sure. Tampa Bay. Obviously I'm talking about the Tampa Bay Super Bowl, but I uh, mm -hmm. That was one of the most embarrassing games I'd ever been a part of. So I immediately erased that from my memory. And when just people ask me about it. it, I'm just like, what? What game? I don't remember that. I don't know what you're talking about, but um, <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a fun one to remember. Not, many, not very many good memories from that one, but I... Well, um, you should be happy right now, though. You guys are world champions. Yeah. How's it, it feel? Is, it is a, like we kind of mentioned, it is a extremely gratifying feeling of doing everything that you would expect to do in the beginning of the season. You you know, we uh we had a whole bunch we have all these goals that you set for yourself for the team, win your division, first seed in the A first seed in the AFC so you have home field advantage all the way through the playoffs and you get the bye. Make it to the Super Bowl. Uh play well in the Super Bowl. Not just go to the Super Bowl but win it. You have all these goals and all these mindsets. It makes you feel like you know what I mean? You're on top of the world and you're the best at what you do. And uh yeah. It's just uh especially when you do it the way the way that we did it through the ups and downs we completely switched our entire look on offense just about in terms of the weapons that we had on top of that a lot of our defensive secondary was completely new um and it's just uh yeah it's gratifying and it's um it feels great knowing how many people really didn't you know pick us to do much in the beginning of the season because of how much we lost and uh the fact that we you know we couldn't beat the Joe Burrow, uh, Cincinnati Bengals when it mattered. So it was um, the way we did it, the ups and downs, the growth, you know, just a pr just proud of my guys uh, that I play ball with and uh, the, the coaches that I play for. Well, let's get to um, – now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the start of the game. Let's do it. How do you think uh, we did with the pregame outfits? <laughs> you represented the Heights real well, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Getting getting some of the text throughout the week from uh, from Coach Jones and and Creel and uh, seeing uh, the the high school lit up, seeing downtown lit up 
for the Cleveland Heights colors, gold. Oh, yeah. Man. Um, seeing Tower all that City. stuff, yeah. I was going to wear one of my foundation shirts, and I was like, you know what? It just feels like I got to represent this. It was such a great moment for our hometown yeah. that it only felt right uh, to rep the Heights going into the Super Bowl. Yeah. There were, there were, the Heights was definitely in attendance. Yep. There were uh, there were probably about, I would say, 20 to 30 members from the Heights that were at the Super Bowl. Um, and uh, we loved you guys, man. That was so yeah. cool to see the city feel like, you know, they were they had a team or had a dog in the fight on both squads. And um, just made it made my freaking day. And I, I, I say this, I said this in my post game. A lot of this game on the field, I will, I will, of course, I'll remember a few plays here and there. But I will remember the feeling of being lifted by everybody and just having our family at the yeah. forefront, um, appreciating everybody. Uh, you know, appreciating our family. You know, kind of sure. like how they got behind uh, the whole Kelsey Bowl and. All that, and it was just, uh, it was, it was that. That itself was one of the most gratifying feelings. Seeing everybody uh, loved Ed and Donna Kelsey um, as much as they've uh, they've appreciated us. So no that was doubt. pretty cool. Or even more, even more. It's, mom got called America's mom and got a Bud Light deal. Man, it's nuts. Yeah, I'm gonna touch on that in a second. After, from what it felt like after the game, seeing her. But yeah. dude, what uh, what the hell are you wearing? What is this? Oh, that Louis! That's a, nice. Yeah, you're Louis, talking about my pregame fit, baby. And that's I a, was, uh, that's I was very coat? fortunate. Trench coat, <laughs> trench coat, yeah. Uh, a trench coat with a with is a that camo camouflage. It's like camo with a face on it. If you look at it close enough, you'll see a big face on the front. What what terrain is that camo? Is that like uh, that's that uh, that's that's like the New York streets because the uh, the uh, designer is actually uh, a kid or a guy out of New York, uh, nice. Kid Super. Kid super, super, he's a real super creative dude. Ironically, super looks like it. Super creative guy, and um, he gets into more than just clothes. He does a lot of art, and I think a lot of his art he actually puts on the clothes. So what you see right there on that jacket is his art. Ah. Um, did I think he he did a few contests uh, in terms of like art shows or certain um, certain pieces. Right. For the for Louis Vuitton before, and sure enough, long story short, uh, I loved his kid super brand. He did uh, he did a line or a a, a certain um, season for Louis Vuitton mm -hmm. recently, and sure. one of the jackets that was in his uh, fashion show was that exact jacket. They don't even have like multiple of them. That's the it's a one on one piece that hasn't gotten made Whoa. yet, and it was straight off the runway. Especially the same rare. thing with the uh, with the ba the matching bag on it. Um, so I just I said, you know what, my dog's a my dog's a painter. I'm gonna go ahead and just have this all white canvas on with this Louis jacket, yeah, the white Louis shades, the Louis bag, and I'm just gonna walk in this place like I own it, baby. <laughs> well, all right now, look good, baby. Man, I felt good walking in. Kid Super, thanks for swagging me out, dog. And LV, baby. You want to get to the game? Have the same socks on all week. I did. I only brought one pair of socks. That's the nice thing about wool, kids. Uh, <laughs> Listen, wool, wool is antimicrobial, so you know you're, you're you're pretty good to wear them. What? I don't even know if these words are fucking real. I just kind of go antimicrobial. With... That means that it uh, it's kind of doesn't really excludes. stink. Doesn't it's get really stinky. Small. It stays pretty clean, even if you wear them for multiple days. That's a uh, learn that climbing uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Ah, all right. Now. If you're ever going to be stuck in clothes for a long period of time, go with wool. And if you're not. Um, Go with Louis Vuitton. What a <laughs> pre-game pre warm-ups. Teams struggled with the field at times. What do you? Yeah. What do you? How did you? Th what did you think of the the field? I thought it was it, the field was not good. It was a, it was a slippery field, but that's part of the uh, that's part of the environment. I mean, you know, you play rain games, you play uh, certain fields. Sometimes just are a little bit uh, slicker, and um, yeah. you know, that's pre-game is the time to figure that out, and. Uh, you know, you have multiple sets of cleats. You usually have at least your your standard cleat, which most guys probably wear a molded bottom at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. Um, and then you have screw-ins if the turf is really bad. Yeah, the, uh, the cleat rain games gets longer. Gets a little bit longer. Studs, also known as studs. And then uh, for me, we actually even have another shoe, which would be like a turf shoe, which I never wear those. I always wear either my molds or my screw-ins. But I didn't even think the screw-ins were necessary. My molds were grabbing really well pre-game. I didn't really have many issues running out there, uh, yeah. but obviously some guys did. And, um, 
You know, it's one of those things where you got to try and figure that out pregame if you can and get into the right footwear. Uh, it was certainly talked about pregame. I remember guys came in. I don't usually go out before warmups. There's a lot of guys that go out and get like a, a warm up before the warm up, which I never really thought made too much sense. But I am just wasting gas here. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I only got so much energy. I don't need to <laughs> I gotta warm up to the warm up. But Listen, um, I ain't, I ain't going to save it in the game, but I'll save it right now. Yeah. To each, to each your own. But I, multiple guys came in after that saying that it was real bad. And uh, I thought about going with screw ins. And I don't like to go screw ins unless I have to because I'm not, that's not the cleat I usually practice in uh and when i went out there for i decided to wear the molds out there to see how it felt felt fine and throughout the game didn't have any issues but um i gave it a good test i was really trying to cut move put myself in situations that might occur and uh you know obviously i mean there's one clip that somebody showed online i can't remember who it was but like the entire like both tackles the entire (laughs) d-line and pat all fell like on the same play so yeah it was not an ideal turf situation out there but Especially when you got around the paint, the the logo on the, yeah. in the middle of the field, not necessarily yep. uh, in the end zones. But dude, that's one I didn't of the have things. any problems either, though. I'm yeah, with but you. I didn't have any problems either. And to be honest, I love that. Like for me, <laughs> is we're it the, weird? We're the exact same, dude. Dude, I like I, that. I like that it's not pristine conditions every time. Like you got to figure it out. That's the beauty of the NFL. Like it ain't like baseball where you're gonna stop it just because there's a little bit of rain coming down. I like, want m- I want more layers of difficulty. I want as Let's much bring- <laughs> that is going to make this out of your comfort zone as possible because I'm going to figure it out. That's my mindset going into every game. I'm with you. I want I'm Chris Jones to be slipping all over the place. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but every The thing is, is the the field itself has kind of always been notorious. Um, I, feel, I think that the fact that it can roll in and out, I, I don't know why, but I think the stadiums where it can roll in and out, they almost think that, oh, we could just grow it. Yeah, it'll just grow back, but you can't grow it in two weeks. Like there's, it's yeah. not necessarily the grass on top that's growing that looks plush and looks great. It's it's everything underneath. Yeah, it's the roots. The roots it's are the what roots. give you footing. Yeah, and you, um, and it's a certain type of grass, I would assume. But it's uh, yeah, everybody. A lot of a lot of these. A lot of the skill players just like to wear those kind of soccer style cleats yeah. that have the really thin cleat. Not as many. Uh, kind of where you need them and then on top of that a lot of guys run on their toes so now you're not using the whole cleat you know you're not using every you know rigid on the bottom of the cleat you're Mm -hmm. is that right is that the right word rigid i i think it works for me if it works for you nice (laughs) and uh you're not using all of those cleats into the ground like you're not you're not putting you're putting too much force without enough grip if that makes sense and um you know those soccer guys the soccer guys little guys yeah, not as much force being thrown into the ground. You're not cutting through the grasses as as, uh, as violent. Yep. I don't know. There's a lot that goes into it. I like to just you know try and be balanced going in and out of a break. Yeah. Uh, and you know I think it's when you make those instinctual cuts that you're not necessarily thinking about how you're moving. Those are the ones that you slip. But um, at the end of the day, if you're uh, if you're balanced, I mean, I didn't think the field was that bad. It was definitely yeah. worse in my mind the first time we played in Arizona week one. Yeah. Which I I don't know how week one it's that bad. I think it's because they practiced the training camp in there. Um, Uh, But the middle, the whole, the whole hash, everything inside the hashes was just like sand. It was just like a a bunch, like, you know what I mean? They filled it up with sand so that, because there really wasn't grass and then they kind of sprayed wherever it was brown, green. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. There was no root structure to it. So that was why, you know, everybody just kept ripping it up every time they got on their toes. Like yeah. it was, there weren't enough cleats in the ground to give you traction with just your front toe cleat. So I enjoyed the, the, the grass and I like it when it gets harder. Pre-game, did you do anything different pre-game or did it feel any different pre-game? No, the, the biggest thing I did, I knew it's a long game. So the biggest thing I tried to do throughout the game was just stay hydrated. Uh, make sure I'm chugging water, eating tons of sodium, um, I actually probably did a little bit too much. I think I got overhydrated to start the game, but <laughs> oh, for yeah. pregame at least. It's too but, much everything, man. Too yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather too. be overhydrated than underhydrated. That's for dang sure. And uh, I think uh, that was what I remembered last time we were in the game was just how long everything takes. Yeah. So that was my biggest emphasis was, you know, let's make sure that we have enough fuel in the tank to sustain till the end of the game. I didn't want to be cramping in the Super Bowl because I didn't 
think ahead of time to make sure I was ready to go. No, I'm with you on that. Um, I uh, I wasn't necessarily worried about the hydration um, as much as I was just about energy. I yeah. was like trying to save all my energy. We're talking about wasting gas pregame. You could waste gas just by thinking about yeah. The, the, you know what I mean? Like what sure. you do emotionally, how your body reacts to your thoughts mm-hmm. can build up, you know, the the heartbeat. It can build up, you know, blood flow. And it can no make doubt. your body feel like it's working out. Um, and you can get exhausted in, in that manner as, as much as you can actually running around and getting fatigued. Yep. But uh, so I was in I was just playing uh, playing games on my phone, trying to not think about anything. Yep. Um, and uh, always a good strategy. Yeah, it's always a good getaway, and um, yeah, by the time the game came around, it was uh, it was even a longer waiting period uh, because of the whole Super Bowl show, which we'll get to. Yeah. Um, man, feelings running out of the tunnel. It was uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool running out of the tunnel. Actually, even even before that pregame, I want to speak on this pregame is like uh, I realized like. There are so many familiar faces on the sideline, man. It's like, and I I hardly get to see a lot of like the NFL greats all like during the season. So like when I see a guy that I really fucking love, you know what I mean? I'm I'm like, I got to go. I got to go say what's up. Uh, Charles Woodson, man. Oh, okay. Ohio football player. You feel me? Michigan's greatest football player. Ooh, I I don't know if I could say that. Well, I can't because he, he, he won the Heisman. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I I think he did too. Two way player. Defensive, first defensive guy to ever win. Either way, um, absolute legend. Um, played against him. Felt like I had, he had the upper hand every single time I played him. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, just got a lot of respect for him. Saw him on the sideline uh, right before I was about to actually run like a route in uh, pregame. And I was I yeah. was looking at him like, you want to come and get, give it one more try? You want to come on out here? <laughs> and he like pulled his pants up and like started kind of running over like he was really going to do it. He said, I got one in me. I got one. I was like, man, dog, you got more than just one in you, brother. Um, yeah, and you've, you've showed us enough already. Uh, but, yeah, I always uh, I always like to kind of see who's there pregame, um, sure. who's on the sideline. Saw Gordon Ramsay. Got to say hello to him. Nice. Um, yeah. Other than that, man, uh, running out of the tunnel was pretty damn fun. It's always electric. Uh, everybody, uh, that's really when you know who's there. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, when we did the press, uh, the press deal in the beginning, the ceremony in the beginning of the week with Fox, uh, where we stood on stage and mom came and gave us the cookies and all that. Yeah. Um, I thought that the Chiefs were way there were way more Chiefs fans in there. So I'm like, wow, we might actually, you know, we might actually hold our own in this thing. You know, knowing how big of a city Philadelphia is, how many more fans you guys have. Um yeah, and then we got to the game, and it was it was a home game for Philadelphia for sure. We were in silent. So. We were silent the whole time. Don't get me wrong; the Chiefs fans showed up, but uh, you could tell that uh, the Eagles. There were more Eagles fans there. So for I do sure. think did I do think that that was partly because the opposing sideline you were looking at was all the opposing teams' fans. So I actually thought the reverse. I thought there were more Chiefs fans there. But really, I will say the Eagles fans who were there. That's when I noticed them. Was when it was loud. Like when they were cheering uh, pregame and all this stuff, I was like, oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. They There's came a out ton of, the of Eagles fans here. Yeah. 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 You come out of the tunnel, you, your team cheers, and then they come out of the tunnel, and the other team cheers, and you're like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. But when I went out there, all <laughs> I saw was red because across the field, it was all you guys. Yeah, so I'm like, damn, point. god dang. They, they did it because you're right. For the media night, it was a lot of Chiefs fans. And I'm yeah. like, dang, I thought Phil, and then I look behind me, I was like, oh, that's where they're at. <laughs> 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 but um, I didn't really. I don't know. The field, running out of the tunnel, I was just kind of like, maybe I think what I was trying to do what your strategy is. I was like, don't let your emotions get too high right now. Just go out there. And dude, it didn't work because as soon as Chris Stapleton started singing the national anthem, it hit like a ton of bricks. Yep. And that it was, was a, game was, on after that. That was by far my favorite Killed national it. anthem that I've ever yeah. heard in my life. I actually, I watched the, the rerun of it and it was every bit of ele- like emotional and like, yeah, the drama in it like it was mm-hmm. awesome and chris table then absolutely killed it and um, i always get emotional during the anthem but i think chris every did time. an unbelievable job and every time for me you're just thinking about you know how man you're you're in the game 
everything that took to get there all season long, all your teammates, everything that they've been through, um, all the things that that, that the city's been through to get to that moment, like all that stuff's just running through your head. And you think about how thankful you are to be in the country Mm. that you live in. And um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. uh, The emotion that hit for, I think everybody in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, and Chris didn't, Chris didn't make it any easier with the, the way he sang that thing. Hey, you ain't lying. All righty. Before we keep going, we need to shout out our partner, Fireball. Fireball takes any event to the next level, especially celebrating the big win in the big game. All righty. I uh, don't know what that means. Okay. Fireball's <laughs> iconic cinnamon flavor tastes fire and goes down smooth, making it the ultimate crowd pleaser. That's why it's the number one shot in the country. Crowd pleaser. What I really like about the fireball shooters is that there's no shot glass needed. You just crack it open and knock it back. Taste that pure delight. Jason, you a big fireball guy? Am I? Huge. It's the number one shot in the country for a reason. Just crack it and enjoy it, and you can get fireball wherever you purchase your fine spirits. All right, now. Alrighty, if there's one thing I get asked all the time, it's how do I maintain my health during the season? And the answer is simple. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens every day. I ask myself, how are you this healthy all the freaking time, man? Uh, And I know you guys probably didn't expect Jason Kelsey to be a big greens guy. Because I know I didn't. Trav, this is way more than basic greens, brother. It's like nine products in one. Just one serving of AG1 covers all my nutritional basis and supports my long-term gut health with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source, high quality ingredients. Well, damn, I did not know that. Yeah. If you're listening to this show and have been saying to yourself, man, I want to be as healthy as Jason Kelsey, (laughs) you're in luck. Because through the month of February only, Athletic Greens is giving you their best deal ever with 10 travel packs plus a one-year Supply of vitamin D. Like Trav just said, for the month of February only, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and 10 free travel packs with your first purchase. This is their best offer yet, and you can get it at athleticgreens.com slash new heights. That's athleticgreens.com slash new heights. Hey, now. Mama Kels jumped on the jumbo trying at the coin toss. We I know. We, were gonna, we knew we, gave we each might other a see look. each other. You guys, <laughs> you guys only had three captains, or you guys only just you only, you only decided to have three go For out some there? reason, it's only been me, Fletch, and BG going out there all year. We, we have uh, Darius Slay as a captain, Lane Johnson's a captain, and then I think Jake Elliott is the other captain. But for some reason, it's only been us three going out there. All right. So we, uh, we saw each other at the coin toss. Yep. Um I, we were standing at the coin toss before the commercial break, which is different because oh, we were Jaylen just Hurts standing. Is a too. We got a bunch of captains. What am I trying? We were, sta- we were standing, staring at each other for probably what felt like a good it was two a long to three time. minutes. And I usually, well, when you go out to I the middle of the field, I don't think we were supposed to go out there that soon either. That's the what offici- I'm saying. The 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 TV guy was trying to hold us back, and the official was like, "Let's go, let's go, let's go," and. The guy was like, you're, you're going to be out there way too long. Shaffers. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> they uh, they had us out there standing there and we're standing there staring at each other while it's at a commercial break. Yeah. And during the commercial break in the stadium, they have a host of the, of the show, um, which was uh, Cam Jordan. Yep. And uh, he was on there with a the cast and mm-hmm. uh, or, or he was on there with a few others that yep. um yeah, I'll just say it like that. He was on there with a few others, <laughs> and uh, the first segment that they were doing right before the coin toss was the segment with Donna Kelsey, our That's mother. Right. And uh, they were uh, they were doing a which brother is this, and they would say something, and my 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 mom had a face with Jason and a face with me, and would say, "Oh, Jason's the fattest. Oh, <laughs> Travis is a crybaby. Oh," and so it was um it was pretty fun, and honestly. I didn't realize that it was only like in the stadium. I thought that was on like the actual broadcast, and I just felt like when I looked in your eyes, me and you kind of yeah, looked at we each other. We were like, like, "This is getting a little bit too much. This is this is a lot. This yeah. is a lot. This is where we were trying to stay away from." Uh, <laughs> but my mom absolutely killed it, and um, of she even said she didn't want to do 
all of that. She even said that. So we're we're not uh we're not breaking any news here. But it definitely <laughs> felt awkward. And uh, really, the only thing that made it feel unawkward was uh, Pat Mahomes saying. Uh, Oh man, starting this thing off with Donna. <laughs> <laughs> what better way? <laughs> I was just like, oh, all right, Pat, we didn't make light of this situation. It made me feel better about this, Pat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. And I I love seeing mom in that light. Uh, we just talked about it, and it's, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. But definitely just a tad bit awkward there for a little bit, just standing around, staring at each other, listening to mom talk about me and Jason in front of all the uh, all of our teammates. <laughs> Were we robbed of a Donna Kelsey coin toss? I don't think we were robbed of it. She did sit with Roger Goodell during the game. Uh, Goodell offered her to come up and hang in the suite, and that is a a once-in-a-lifetime deal. So I'm glad my mom got to do that. Yeah, she did. She's like, ooh, the commish? Can't say no to the commish. Um, And she sat next to DeMar Hamlin. So it was Roger Goodell on her right side and then uh, DeMar Hamlin. Um, on her left side, uh, number three, the safety from uh, yeah, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills that went through uh, a pretty hard time there uh, during their game against Cincinnati that we all yeah. know about. But he um, he's doing great now, and he was at the game. Um, he was also at the NFL Honors and got to got to have an unbelievable speech about uh, about his situation and about how thankful he is. Um, and yeah, shout out to Mom for uh, being the superstar that she was last week. Was there any shit talking at the coin toss? Yes, there was. Brandon Graham, you know. You know, Brandon Graham. We had a feeling that Five Five was going to come with that heat, <laughs> and he show sure did. He was he was talking shit to Chris Jones. He talked a little shit to me. Told me he said, "Trav, we know Trav. Trav, we know you're not about to hit nobody." I said, "You're right. I'm about to avoid everybody. <laughs> I'm about to avoid, and especially you know my you. game. <laughs> Definitely avoiding you. I'm going to try and stay away from you the whole time." Yeah. Um, the, uh, it was it was cool. I don't know. It was a unique coin toss because I've never known so many people. So on a well. personal level, yeah, yeah one thousand like, percent. Obviously, we've we've been with each other's teams so much through the years that, like, you know, I don't know. It was just a very odd. It was it was it was very uh, familial kind of at the coin toss, not just between us two, but with Pat and Chris and and everybody that was out there. Yeah, um, you know, I think that it was just one of those games where there was more familiarity there than just us two, yeah. and that was felt immediately at the coin toss. Um, and then we get into the first quarter from the first uh, two drives for both of us. It uh, started off with a bang. All right now. Uh, it was uh, very much a Kelsey Bowl start. Yep. Uh, we uh, On the first drive. Started off. First and goal from the one-yard line. What are we running? 92%. Baby. 92%, baby. And Jalen Hurts was... finishes the opening drive with a quarterback sneak. It was the start of the most demoralizing play of the game. Every single time you guys got anywhere from third or fourth and short, uh, we knew it was coming, and there was nothing we could really do about it. Uh, well, actually, we'll get to it. There was one thing. There we could was do about one thing, it. and it worked. And and it worked. Luckily, it only worked once, but yep, rather uh, work once once than uh, than not have any hey, work. It brought it down. It brought the percentage down. It won't it won't count as the bringing of the percentage yeah, down, it won't but count. it did. It won't count. It did. Um, and then obviously you guys opening drive score with a Travis Kelsey touchdown right yeah. away. It was a Kelsey bowl esque start two catches for 38 yards to open up the game. And then just got real stanky. Oh yeah. Then it gave us while you scored a touchdown, I was eating a Gatorade bar. For some reason, everybody thought that was hilarious. Um, like I'm just eating a Gatorade bar. <laughs> He's fueling up, man. I was as also I'm exhausted. Burning, as I'm burning I was fuel, so I gotta... tired after that first drive because it was a long one. Yeah, it was. And I'm like... <sighs> was it 17? Was, was that the 17 play drive? Or was it the next remember. one? You guys had remember. a 17 play drive, it was a long which was one, though. ridiculous. It took um, six minutes, I think, off the right from the get-go. I think you guys got the ball like with like nine minutes, maybe. Yeah. Let's check. I don't know if that's and, right. Um, either that way, though, I... um. I got to give a shout out to Eli London, Alex Kazis, Big Daily Baker. The, that stanky leg takes it back to high school. That thing, that thing was hot. That's back where in it started. You thought yeah. you thought that thing was hot. They thought that thing was stanky on Sunday, man. That thing that thing used to be real stanky. It been stanky back at heights. Yeah, it been stanky, <laughs> and it ain't even the stankiest. My dog Eli, Eli, man, he he's got, got a stanky bro. He got that stanky, that yeah, super stanky. Um. Always used to have fun. It was cool to cool to. They were in the they were in the house. Um, Alex wasn't, but uh, daily Eli. They were in the house. They were all the, the house. Game. Yeah, I wanted to stop by, but I was they didn't get a lot of opportunities to see the girls. Yeah. So oh man, I, I was saying they were in the house like they were in the game. Oh but, uh, okay. So what were you uh, thinking after the opening drives for both teams? 
Um, this is going to be the highest scoring game ever. <laughs> I mean, it felt like it. I, I, you know, and I mean, going into it, you know, we knew we were going to have to put up points. Like we're playing. I think we Pat both Mahomes. we both knew touchdowns were going to be the fucking the only way to win this one. It's it's just a reality when you play good quarterbacks and you play good offenses, they're going to score points no matter how good the defense is. And it ended up being a lot. And um, you know, we knew that the mistakes were going to have to be at a minimum to to win this one. You ain't lying. What did you uh, think about the second quarter? I don't. I, I feel like we weren't even on the field. Uh, you weren't. Yeah, the second quarter. You guys had one possession, right? The second quarter was a blur to me. I don't remember much. I do remember uh I remember the the drive to the field goal that we ended up missing and then you guys scoring again. That was uh that was big time. I know. That felt like it was demoralizing. Then and then we go in and have a chance to cut that to was it two score lead at that point? We were winning by ten going into half. You guys were winning by ten. Yeah. So it's no, but when we got the ball back, there was I think three minutes, two or three minutes left. We had an opportunity to drive down at least, cut that lead in half. Yep. Or or get a to cut it to, you know, four points. And um, I think we went like three and out. Yeah. Then that was like, damn, we're giving them time to go down and score again, which you guys did, and now it's a two score lead for the Eagles instead of a one score lead, or you know, us cutting to that cutting into that deficit. Um, yep. That one was the one where it was like, ah, oh, that was that was not what we needed right there. Yeah. Because um, the, the hardest thing is to try and you know fight back against you guys, and it's it's very similar, I would assume, uh, against us because now the defensive front just gets to pin their ears back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, knowing that we got to pass the bar, we got to try and hurry up and 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 get down the field. You you yep. never want to get into that mode uh, yeah. of playing football, but um. Yep. Luckily enough, we came out in that uh, that second half. So, um, yeah, that was really my uh, my whole first half assessment was, uh, we, this is fun. We're about to score every drive to, oh, no, we yeah. are down. What did you, uh, you think of the, the second quarter? Yeah, I mean, you guys didn't have the ball. I mean, we, we had to drive a little bit. Um, obviously, the when you give up a defensive score Man. and then get the ball back and then have a long drive after that and score yourselves – that's a long amount of time for one team to have possession of the ball. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was definitely a goal of ours was to, hey, let's not give these guys the ball. Let's try and retain this while also score touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think uh, obviously, you know, the the fumble uh, picked up by Bolton was crushing. We were like, oh, my gosh, man. We just we, we were in control of this game and we just gave them. 14 or we just gave him the tie and um to be able to uh get the ball back um and score right away that next drive was kind of a, a i mean it's unbelievable by jalen hurst to respond yeah. in a moment in the game the way it happened that previous drive uh to have the composure to go back out there and put together an unbelievable drive to retake the lead was huge for us yeah and, and um, i thought sirianni did a great great job of Kind of putting it back in his hands, getting getting them to have that momentum. I think uh, right right after that fumble, the next play was a QB draw for like twenty, like fifteen, twenty yards. Yeah, and just all that does is it it, it gets a guy more comfortable back making plays, feeling successful, getting back into the groove. And sure enough, like you said, you guys just went down the field and uh, and put up a touchdown to take the lead again by seven. Then we end up getting a field goal before half, go in ten nothing to half, and are leading ten points and. Um, you know, we all knew it wasn't enough, though. You know, going into halftime, we fully knew, hey, if we don't put keep our foot on the gas, if we don't keep playing good football, you know, the Chiefs are very uh, much high-powered enough to bring this game back within their grasp. So, um, you know, we were, we were focused going into halftime. We were focused uh, in the locker room. We knew you were getting the ball to start the second half, which was huge. You know, yeah. I think there's a lot of debates of, you know, do you receive, do you kick? Um, I think getting that extra projection in the second half is, is big, but huge, you know, we went off and, you know, we, we used the, uh, the first half, uh, receiving to our advantage. We scored right away, which is a big way to start a game, but you guys answered that. And then you guys scored right away to start the second half, um, coming out of halftime and, uh, you know, brought it within three right away. How'd you feel about Pat's injury? Um, and, and Did it look like it was bad. 
I thought it. I didn't think it was bad, but I just felt like he tweaked it. I, I didn't think he was coming out. You know what I mean? But sure. who knows when you tweak it how how bad it is? Whether it's just like scar tissue ripping, or if you're actually doing more damage to the ligament. Yeah, um, let's ask this: How did Pat feel all? Because there was there was also everybody had their opinions with the Eagles. Like, you know, is Pat going to be at full strength? Is he going to be you know hindered by his ankle? And for me, I was like, man, this dude's been recovering now for three weeks. He just played a game on it, which. Actually, I think kind of helps the healing process because it like gets it moving. Um, yeah. What uh, what did you think watching Pat prepare during the week? Did it look like it was hindering him at all? No. Yeah. Yeah, he looked fine. Yeah, he looked fine during the week. Um, and honestly, I think it might have just been scar tissue because he looked fine after that. Um, <laughs> didn't really didn't didn't really affect him. The second half, he was he was, he was running out. around. He was in the he was moving around in the pocket just fine. He was moving out of the pocket just fine. There really wasn't a time where, uh, you know, I mean, it was hindering him from doing anything football wise, or at least it didn't look like it. You know, yeah, one incompletion the whole second half, right? Yeah, and it was on a interesting interesting play. That, Went back uh, did to not the, work. Uh, <laughs> well, let's start the second half. What uh? Well, actually, go back to that. Would you guys make any adjustments at halftime? Yeah, yeah, we made an adjustment mentally. I think uh, there were there were some words said by uh, B enemy Pat Mahomes that um that kind of fired everybody up. I know it fired me up. It really gave the direction and the mentality of the team to come out and start hot and just play for each other. The biggest thing in the message was you know strain, find yeah. every find a way every single play to get an extra yard. Yep. Find and find a find a way every single play to to rally around the guy next to you or do your job for the guy next to you, um, but yeah, sometimes you just need that spark of energy to to kind of reboot and refocus, and um, yeah, I thought uh, I thought we definitely did that at halftime. And the other thing was we got to take advantage of when we do get the ball. We can't punt. We can't settle for field goals. We're we're down two scores. We need touchdowns and we need them uh, every single time we yep. get the ball. That's the only way we're going to find a way back into this game or climb back into this game because we knew how well you guys were playing offensively and defensively. It was, uh, I think, it was kind of the same message, you know, just uh, do what you have to do and do it to your best ability and with the most effort. I'm, I'm screaming on the sideline, energy and focus all game, just because I know those two things tend to tend to kind of get people tied up. You know, when you're thinking too much. You get tied up when you're not playing with enough energy or you you, know, you start to get timid in terms of how you do your job. If you go out there and you fly around and just go and play with reckless abandon and focus in on your job, um, energy and focus uh, is always, you know, a nice little reboot for me at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we didn't make too many adjustments, uh, you know, offensively. Stuff was working. We felt good about the first half outside of the the one turnover. Uh, the one thing that we weren't – that we tried to adjust to and we still didn't do a good job in the second half, you know, I know that we scored a lot of points, man, but I give Spags all the credit in the world. He, uh, he kind of got us in the run game. He was scheming things up. Nick Bolton was making plays. The linebackers were playing aggressive. As well as Jalen Hurts played and as well as they threw the ball and moved the ball down the field um, – you know, there were some things that we were trying to adjust to at halftime in that regard, but uh, certainly we felt good offensively. We felt like we could move the ball at will, and uh, we were confident coming out of the first half. Anyways, start the third quarter. Uh, opening drive, you guys go 75 yards right away and put up a tutty. Uh, yeah. How big was this drive for you guys? I mean, it's huge. That was the, that was the momentum booster. It was the one that kind of like, because we came out with high energy. We ran the ball great. Uh, Pop was back there uh, being the maniac he was. He mm -hmm. runs like Tasmanian Devil, pops up every single time he gets tackled. Um, that was electrifying. Just uh, guys making plays. Pat was slinging it around to everybody. Everybody was getting a piece of the pie. And it just felt like Coach Reed was dialing up the perfect play on every single down. Um so what it, after that first opening drive, we all kind of looked at each other like, yeah, let's do it. And then you guys had another f like seven minute, eight minute drive. And we were just like on the sidelines staring at each other like, don't lose it. Don't lose yeah. it. Keep it. Stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys ended up settling for a field goal, I think. Yeah. But and which was we, we knew field goals wasn't get, weren't going to be enough. And um I talked to Nick, today was our exit interviews on Tuesday talking to Nick, you know, he's 
I mean, you're going to question everything in a game like this, but um, it was just, we knew that that field goal was like, man, we need to score a touchdown right there against these guys. And I think uh, it was, I think it was fourth and four when we went for our field goal. And I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, man, right. this is a see he, especially uh, how Sirianni was going for it. It was like four yeah. down territory. As soon as you guys hit the 50. Yeah. Uh, we, just yeah, about for the entire times. first half. Yeah, for sure. And then in my mind, I'm like, man, I wish we would have went for it right there during mm-hmm. the game. But, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, fourth and seven. Dallas, first of all, Dallas and Jalen did a great job of keeping that drive going. Man. Multiple big plays Dallas. on third down. One what was, a dog, he, man. Yeah, dude. What a dog. I don't think he's, he still doesn't get enough credit for how good of a player he is. And uh, I don't think he gets enough targets. Yeah, I mean, it's I tough. You got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. You know, there's a lot of – uh, there's a lot of pieces that, you know, to spread the ball around to, but Touché. um, I do think Dallas has been a very underrated tight end in the, in the NFL for a long time, uh, and was happy for him to have these huge catches in the game. Yeah. Uh, so yep. Yeah, settle for three, uh, gave you guys the ball back. And, uh, in the fourth quarter, you guys went 75 yards in nine play. Well, not all the fourth quarter, but 75 yards, nine plays, and uh, finally take the lead. Yeah. And uh, Andy Reid revealed the play was called Corn Dog. Yep. Which old Corn Dog. Big fan of uh, anything that has the word Corn Dog in it. Uh, <laughs> Those of you wondering why uh, NFL plays are called like just random shit like this, but it's actually not very random at all. Corn Dog uh, stands for a concept, a two by two concept where. One guy runs a corner, and the other one runs a drag. So we came up with a code name, Cord Dog. But this uh, specific play was uh, designed for KT Gadarius to go in, act like he was running in motion, and then run the drag route, which is just a straight flat route. And what that does is it's uh, it puts stress on the defense uh, to play their gaps, especially on the perimeter. And Usually, if it's man, the guy that that has KT in in motion will get caught trying to bubble over linebackers to meet him on the other side of the field, right? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it was a tell in the beginning or earlier on in the uh, in the week. We knew that we had uh, at least one or two plays that uh, that could you know be pretty big for us uh, when we ran that. And sure enough, both of them ended up hitting. Yeah. Well, it was the first lead, and then. Uh Chiefs returned the ball to us, and we punt. This was the biggest play in the game to me. Um, and it's frustrating because I was a big part of it. We go three and out, and, uh, you know, can't do that. And yeah. especially with the way you guys are playing offensively. You know, we uh, got caught in a hot throw on second down, brought it to within three and, man, what was it, two or three? I mean, it was close. Short yardage situation. Call a play action. Steve Spagnola dials up a uh, a zero blitz saw you know typical pressure in that situation uh you know six one defense and uh you know in hindsight wish i would have called out i mean this is the one that keeps living rent free in my head because i had control of this and it could have been easily handled with just simply having the tackle go out on the backer um i elected to keep it inside and uh you know the backer went unblocked and it was uh it's really frustrating because uh, if we go out there, I think we've convert that, and you know that's a big play that I'm kind of thinking about over and over again. Um, so, Damn. yep, turn the ball over uh, essentially, punt it, and uh, you guys have an amazing punt return. And uh, KT, s- yeah, setting you up on the five yard line. Darius Tony, I'll and, tell you um, what, I tell you what, who might who might not have appreciated that punt return more than you guys and that's New York football Giants fans because Kadarius Tony was sitting on their roster in the middle of the season yeah. um, not really doing much and he was a first round draft pick the year before yep. and we got him for uh, for definitely not a first round draft pick <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, compensation like what you, yeah. what you would get for a first rounder and uh, he has been nothing but the, the best teammate the bet one of the best football players and one of the most electric guys with the ball in his hand and um everybody you know from the giants you know fan base has just been coming at me because i've said i've said some nice things about him he said yeah but wait just wait just wait until he gets he's he's always injured he never plays and the guy has been in the treatment training room 
doing everything he can to make sure he stays out on the field. He's gotten banged up just a little bit, um, yeah. but uh, he definitely didn't miss this one, man. We uh, we love him for it. Yeah, I mean, I, you never know what happens in a guy's previous stop. Like, I don't never. know what went you wrong in New York. Obviously, he had some injuries and things, but I love when a guy gets a fresh start Prevails, yeah. and, and, and is able to push through that, man. It's hard. It is hard to overcome that stuff and to go to a new spot and, you know, to have uh, the end of the, or the season that he did once he joined Kansas City uh, was awesome for him. So yeah. really happy for him. And then Sky Moore with another corn dog ish play. Scoring again, putting tutties up, man. We're talking about it. Touchdowns are huge. And that was the one. That was the one that put you guys up eight. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that sequence of, of events was really the turning point in the game as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, it was a. Uh, it was frustrating, but we get the ball back. I don't think and it was my man point. Jalen Hurts, dude. He bailed us out so much. Dog. Multiple third downs, Just multiple. Dude, he was he was like a man on a mission. Uh, probably played the best game of his career uh, in the Super Bowl, and immediately puts together an eight play, seventy five yard drive. Finished with another quarterback <laughs> sneak, and then runs it in for a two point conversion. On a play that we really checked to that, or that we went with that was not designed for that defense, but he made it work. And, he did um, make it work. I mean, you want to talk about being clutch. You want to talk about a guy that was ready uh, for anything that the game threw his way. Gave, put us within distance. We were tied at that point. We knew we were giving the ball back to you guys. I think you guys had what four minutes and some change left. Five, four <laughs> On, or five minutes. Yeah. So you know, you're like, man, I, I just hope we get we get another chance, and. Credit to you guys. You guys didn't give us one, really. I mean, yeah, no, that was a that's a tough situation there at the end of the game. But it was um, yeah. it was not it was not a easy feeling seeing Jalen go for that two point and hitting it. Um, it just felt like you know what I mean. We're playing our tail off and we just can't we can't seem to pull away, yeah. you know. Um, but we knew we had a lot of time left and we knew we had Pat Mahomes and sure yeah. enough, uh, Pat does what everybody you know, doesn't think he can do. And that's take off running. Yeah. Um, you guys go man coverage and sure enough, Pat just felt the, felt the lane and felt the middle of the field wide open and just took off, man. Yeah. Um, and that was in my mind, the biggest play of the game and why that's uh that's your MVP right there because he, um, through all the, through all the discomfort that he might've been going through on that play, uh, and he did it for the guys around him, and he and he made the best play that or the best play possible in a scenario like that when it didn't look like anybody was open uh, when you yeah. watch that film for, of that play. So um, shout out to MVP Pat, man. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, after we tied it up, and really actually after the Sky Moore touchdown, I fully believed with how both quarterbacks are playing, you know, whoever had the ball last was going to be the one that won the game, and yeah. um, you know it. Ended up being that way. You guys put together a like textbook, uh, twelve play drive. Took made us use all of our timeouts. Convert on third down on on the penalty, obviously against Bradbury, and uh, ice the game. I mean, we tried even letting Jet McKinnon score the following play uh, with uh, what we call Olay, uh, and so I mean, dude, that's a mature decision by Jet. I mean, I mean. In the First, Super Bowl, you had a chance the, to score a touchdown. Yes, you're in the Super Bowl, and, and there you, was still some time left. If you would have scored, that's an all time. That's an all time stat right there. You, I yeah. mean, that's a memory. You take that football home, and you got that thing on a mantle for the rest of your life. Like Super that's Bowl, right. that's me. I played in that Super Bowl. It's that ball I, mean, I scored I, with right I, there. I, I think I, a lot of guys might score in that situation. I'm one thousand percent scoring that motherfucker. 1, <laughs> you don't care. I'm coming to the sideline, clueless. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, I wasn't we supposed to do that. We were in that mode. No, when I look at the clock, we weren't in that mode. Church mode. Let's go, let's go defense. Yeah. <laughs> you guys still call I'm it church kidding. mode? Yeah. yeah, I'm kidding. I'm a, I'm a team yeah. player. I would have been laying my ass on the one-yard line, too. Yeah. That's why Jet's a captain right there. That's why he's got that C on his chest, man, because he does, he does smart decisions like that. Veteran guy, man. Hopefully we can get him back. You guys kick a field goal with eight seconds left, and uh, we get a ball with one more chance to throw a Hail Mary. Uh, and uh, – Jalen steps on my foot, isn't able to get enough on the ball. Uh, so frustrating way to end a game, to say the least. But you know what? You guys played your tail off. Pat so, played so an unbelievable guys, game. Man. Pat was lights out the entire time. 
as much as it sucks to be on the losing end of it, you know, it was a fun game. It really was. And at some point, I'll uh, hopefully be able to enjoy the fact that I was in it and uh, the season that our team had and yeah. the guys and, you know, but not you quite there You could tell you guys, you guys were having a blast all year long, big guy, and uh, you sure have nothing to hang your head, hang your head about uh, going out of that Super Bowl game. Um you guys played your fucking tails off, and uh, was definitely one of the definitely the best team that we played all season long, brother. So, hats off to Philly. Hats off to the Philly fans. Um, hats off to uh, the organization. Um, there's nothing but respect uh, on from both sides, as you saw. There wasn't a lot of trash talking. Um, yeah. There wasn't a lot of beef between the uh, fan bases going into it. Um, there was a lot of respect for both sides uh, of the ball sure. there, and um, that was a fun one to be a part of. How'd you feel about the ending? Um, I mean, I never want there to be a questionable call at the end. I, I, I said it. I said it in the beginning of the game to the tight ends when I uh, when I saw him pregame. I said, "Man, you know what? I want you guys to go out here and have the best game. I want us to go out here and have the best game and make the best man win." Yeah. I don't want there to be any question about, you know, what happened here, what if, what that, uh, that call was this, that call was that, you know, we, uh, we always say we're never going to think, talk about stuff like that or never make it the reason why, but, um, I never liked there to be a question about what could have been and things like that. Um, so yeah. you hate that, it, uh, there was a controversial call at the end, but, um, at the end of the day, I still felt like that was, uh, that was an amazing game to play in, um, and uh, and definitely it was a tough one. There were a lot of ups and downs. For sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. You know, obviously not uh, the conclusion that would have been indicative of how awesome that game was. But, you know, still, you know, you guys made less mistakes. That's what it comes down to. You know, we just made a few too many mistakes and it ended up costing us. And, um, you know, that's a, when it's <laughs> when it's a game like that, that's the way it goes sometimes. You ain't but a guy that made very few mistakes, Jalen Hurts, man. Not bad for a system quarterback. Patrick Argu- Mahomes arguably on- arguably could have had the MVP, even though you even with the loss. I yeah, mean, I mean how I'm many telling touchdowns, you- how how he prepa- like he, he was lights out with his feet, with his arm, you name it, man. He was playing his tail off. It was unbelievable. And um, you know, he he played so hard. Uh, played unbelievable, 27-38, 374 total yards, 70 rushing yards, most by a quarterback in Super Bowl history. Four total touchdowns, three rushing and a, uh, a, and a one passing. Uh, the three rushing are the most by a quarterback in Super Bowl history. So he was doing some unbelievable things. And, um, you know, I'm just so proud of Jalen Hurts, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, his whole, his whole journey – uh, you know, how he's continually just, you know, answered the criticism with his play on the field. Doesn't say nothing. Does it you know with what class, I mean? man. Does, he does it with class. It takes it. All right. Say what you want to say. And, um, you know, he just keeps performing, just keeps getting better, just keeps improving. And, uh, you know, for a guy to do it that way, uh, to go out there on the biggest stage in his career and to answer the bell for his team, uh, and and play the way he did, man. Unbelievable performance by Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Um. Just you know, very 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 proud of him, and, and uh, was was proud to be out there with him. As you should be. As you should be. Hell of a game, Jalen. You know, an incredible year for Jalen. Uh, with everything that he's been through. First guest of the show. Well, Paul Red, but second guest of the show. You know, it was just it was so much fun to watch him show everybody the quarterback that that he is and who he can be. And uh, it's only going to get better for him. I think Philadelphia is in unbelievable hands with that guy. Right on. Um, yeah. No. For uh, for years to come, the Eagles are in good hands. Well, we got to talk about uh, the other guy that was unstoppable on you know, Sunday. You talking about LeVon? About- <laughs> Patrick LeVon Mahomes the second. <laughs> and my dog Andy Reid, baby, the the best combination of football, man. Yeah. Um, my home's twenty one for twenty seven, uh, one eighty two on three tutties. Can we talk about? Uh, he only had one hundred and eighty two yards. That's what's that can't crazy, be right? No, it is. Right. It is right. So a lot of the yards were 
through the ground. He he scrambled and made a lot of big plays on the ground, but also you guys got a short field with the punt return and the uh yeah, it was it's, it's cr- not a lot of not a lot of possessions. Yeah. So it's shocking. When I saw that he was under two hundred after the game, I was blown away. Because it felt like he was unstoppable. And he was, yeah. but 182 yards on three tutties and a rush for 44 other yards. So yeah, that, that was your uh, game MVP. Uh, very worthy. He went to uh, Disney Land, not Disney World. Uh, or is it the other way? He went to the L.A. Disney, not the uh, the Orlando Disney that he that's, went to back in the Miami Super Bowl. That's Disneyland. I knew it. And... Um, what a guy, man. What a guy. Absolutely propelled us. Like I said, uh, had some words at halftime that uh, really motivated not only myself but the rest of the team, especially on the offensive side, and um, both as a leader and uh, and as a ball player, man. He um, he showed up and showed out for us, man. And I uh, I owe a lot of my success not only to him and Coach Reed, but um, you know I think that game, uh, we don't win that game without that guy. Yeah. I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean the one play that sticks out to me that Pat made was that that scramble on uh, third down, yeah, big run he had. Um, you know, I just if he's going to be doing that and throwing the ball the way he did, it's gonna. I, I don't know how you stop that. Listen, man, this is what good quarterbacks do in the league. It's hard for good defenses to stop good quarterbacks. It just is, and yeah, um, you know, I know that you know the defense is probably kicking themselves for a few of the plays and whatnot, but you know when the guy's playing like that, it's. I don't know how you defend it, to be honest with you. You just you try and keep them off the field, and we didn't do a good enough job in the second half of doing that. What about you? Any play that sticks out? Any play? Um, I would yeah, I was, say – I guess I was more thinking about the um, play that Pat made. but No, I know exactly I, – I hear what you're saying. I, I would say the a play that, that stuck out to me was – that's just the punt return, really. The punt return was, yeah. like you said, it was a huge momentum, momentum booster for us. Yeah, yeah. The play that sticks off is sticks out to me most, and it's going to live for a while, uh, and it probably always will. Unfortunately, uh, is the third down right before that punt because, again, you know, just with the changing of a call uh, and picking that up, uh, you know, th- it could have changed the entire part of the game, and you know, obviously. Um, there's other moments in the game that impacted it. And, uh, you know, I'm happy with the way I played because I played really well physically and, you know, played hard and did everything I could. But there's people out there that want to blame officials. There's people out there that want to point the finger. Man, as a competitor, I feel like I control everything. I feel like what my job and how I do things, you know, that's the one thing you can control. And uh just sucks. So... You know what? It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, man, that shit sucks. I um, I got a few plays that run through my head again in that Tampa game that I, uh, and just uh, overall being a leader that I feel. So I, I I can I can attest for what you're saying right now. So on the record, uh, now that the season is over with, was there a Jason Kelsey scoring play in the playbook? I think because we can reveal there was a pretty big bet that both Kelseys were going to score. There was an anytime bet, right? Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas just ripped off everybody. Oh, just taking man. everybody's money. You got to yeah. love it, man. Oh, God, man. We all, I tell you what, we all wanted to see it. Um, so now you just have to come back next year so that Sirianni can put it in. <laughs> it's hard enough to score touchdowns in this league. We don't need to be drawing them up for me. I can guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> Post game, Trav, you said, now nah, what, y'all? Now, what y'all said, the Chiefs were going to take it home this year. <laughs> Not a single oh, one. Man. Feel that one shit. The- Feel it. And on top of that, next time the Chiefs say something, put some respect on our names. I tell you what, man, I, I, I get that feeling, and I understand what it's like to, uh, to answer all the uh, critics on the, on the top of the mountain. So mm-hmm. I got to say, that probably felt pretty good, didn't it? It felt pretty damn good, man. And um, not nan one of y'all was uh, how I said it. Um, fit ain't nan. That's where I, that, that's an Instagram page that that showcases just uh, outfits that people wear. And uh, yeah, the comments are 
absolutely hilarious. So uh, <laughs> my guy HC the great Harry Clark, man, he um he got me he's got me saying Nan, uh, and uh, go, I Harry. couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, my dog here. So yeah, that's where that came from. But um, a lot of uh, a lot of what I said was uh, based off of you know what happened this off season, and um, you know I kind of talked about it earlier. You know, uh, a lot of people counted us out. A lot of people counted us uh, or expected us not even to win our division, expected us not even to go to the playoffs, and um, expected Pat Mahomes to have uh, the worst year and uh, um, me to kind of start fading away. And uh, we heard it all summer long. We heard it all preseason long. And uh, then we have the first game, and all of a sudden everybody's like, all right, all right, I mean, let's just calm down here. That's, I guess they uh, are still good. They're, they're still pretty good. They're still pretty good. So yeah. um, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Whoever counted the Chiefs out? Well, you, you show me one person that isn't a Chiefs fan before the game that called the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. You show me one guy. Um, oh, there might have been a couple, but it was not. I, I agree with you. The vast I, majority of people. I definitely heard more. I, I, I didn't hear enough of them. I'll tell yeah, you that. It's before definitely, the definitely season, a, yeah. m- the vast majority of people were very much questioning what the Chiefs offense was going to do without Tyreek Hill and what Pat Mahomes was going to look like. And yeah. you know what? You know, as much as I wish we would have won the game, I'm so happy that you guys answered the bell and had the season you guys did. Um, you know, it was – you answered a lot of those questions. And um, yeah, I think uh, you can definitively uh, say that Pat Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks of all time with the way he performed this season. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that was a – yeah. So was, those, those was, of you that think I was, those of you that thought I was just speaking about the Super Bowl itself that week, you know, no, yeah, I understood no. that we that we were only, you know, the Eagles were only favored by three, so I knew there was a chance, and people were, you know, almost fifty fifty on who was going to win that game. I'm just talking beginning of the season, um, over the summer, um, there were a lot of doubters, man, and yeah. that fueled us. That fueled us. So thank you guys. Well. And, gonna uh, get you to get, uh, you get what you deserve. All right. um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Yeah, we're gonna get to what we said to each other uh, because I was misquoted by saying that I said "fuck you, congratulations" after the game when we saw each other, <laughs> which is not what I said. I was like, I don't remember that one. I was, I was, a, I was a loss, uh, loss at words, and uh, you didn't, you didn't really say much, but I know you didn't say "fuck you." I yeah, I mean. That. I didn't say much because I wanted you to go celebrate with your team. You know, I knew that you were going to feel bad for me, and I didn't want that. Uh, I didn't want that to be uh, how you remembered that. So I just kind of made an emphasis to uh, go hug you, tell you I love you, congratulations, and go be with your teammates because I didn't want to be the guy that was going to bring down that moment for you. Yeah. Well, um, there wasn't there wasn't much you could do about me feeling like that. <laughs> so, uh, and you could have told me "fuck you," and I would have still felt <laughs> the exact same way that I felt with you just telling me to go celebrate with your teammates. Is uh, that wasn't an easy feeling, and I would just definitely had lost at words. But um, I did say one thing, and uh, I told you it was the funnest year of my life. Yeah, it was a great time, it, and um, I agree. It was a it was an awesome year. Uh, was, the podcast we've never talked more throughout. Any NFL season, um, yeah, I mean, man. it was that's a, what that's what it was all about for me, man. To to see this script or however you want to call it uh, play out like it did, um, and to be set in schedule every single week to talk it over with you, man. That was um, that was something I could have never drew up. Uh, I could have never, you know, expected it to be this damn fun, man. And yeah. uh, it, it really did blindside me. And um, it was about halfway through the season. I was like, man, I'm having a fucking good old time this yeah. year, man. Uh, body doesn't feel like it. And uh, this year was <laughs> definitely the hardest year in terms of being uh, being ready game by game uh, and things like that. But it, uh, in terms of the, the type of season that we had as a team and then on the type of season that we had, me and you, um, as a yeah. team on this show and the producers and everybody involved um, – yeah, man, it was uh, it was definitely the the best the best season of my life, man. And yeah. Um, yeah, the crazy part is is that I would never be playing this damn game if it wasn't for you. Stop. Um, <sighs> no, nah, it is. Would. It's the truth, man. I followed your footsteps into it. I actually tried to play football uh, when you started playing football. So you started playing hockey. I started playing hockey. You started playing football. I started playing football. Um, yeah. 
there was pretty much every sport except for basketball like that. You started yeah. playing lacrosse. I started playing lacrosse. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of just been following your footsteps throughout this whole gig. And uh, to go through everything leading up to this moment uh, or leading up to this year and then having the year that we had um, and then meeting you at the mountaintop, brother, it was um, it was like we uh, we were on top of that thing together, man. Yeah. And um, I always uh, – I always had a hate for Philadelphia secretly. <laughs> and then the back they of didn't my draft mind, you? Yeah, because they took uh, an all star, um, my man Zach unbelievable Ertz. player, you know, very worthy of the pick. Um, but uh, I screwed up a few years of my life uh, not being able to play on the field with you. And I always hated uh, Philadelphia for not giving me that opportunity, knowing that I had fucked it up so many times. I just wanted that one chance to, you know, team up with my dog. Uh, the way I thought it was supposed to be. And um, I got so much respect for the Eagles organization and uh, things happen for a reason, man. And yep. um, it was uh, it was cool to break the barrier of uh, two brothers going against each other. I don't think the story would have been the same. I don't think the drama would have been the same. I don't think people enjoy our family the same this week that they did uh, if, 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 it, if it's any other way. So um, in a sense... Uh, I don't hate the Eagles as much as I used to. <laughs> I, uh, I I have some appreciation for uh, for Roseman and Lurie taking uh, Zach Ertz. Well, you know, for some reason when I saw you, I wasn't that emotional. I was really, really happy for you. I think I was still caught up in the game, though, and I just wanted to try to not bring you down. So just wanted to say congratulations and was really happy for you, but still caught up in myself a little bit and – um. You know, and I, I, I think I just tried to get away from you as quick as possible so you could go celebrate with your teammates. But the moment I saw mom is when I got really emotional because, man, it was so awesome. It was... All right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, fuck. It was awesome for you know, she was on top of the world for for a week. She was the heavyweight champ, man. She was on top of it and she shined the whole time, man. That was that was the coolest part. Mom, you absolutely killed it. Dad, you've been killing it. Um, yep. And, and uh, uh it was just so cool, man, to see uh, you know her get to celebrate in that with us. Yeah, I'm and uh, it was an awesome moment. <sighs> you know, so just so happy for her, and so happy that um, you know she got her moment. Dad got his. So yeah, I was the only, <laughs> ironically, you know, you you lose the Super Bowl. And you're you're crying after the game, and they're not tears of sadness. You know they're tears of joy. So, still sucked, but you know. So what makes you the best, brother? So what makes you the best? You know, proud of my team and my guys, and you know, sorry Philadelphia that we couldn't fucking get it done, but uh. You know, happy for you guys, and uh, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. All righty, what happened to Dad? Because I I got to see Mom. I didn't get to see Dad after the game. Uh, what? Uh, you got to see him? Yeah, I got to see him. He How'd finally that go got that on the Dad? field. Yeah, it was um, it was very emotional. The same thing, man. It was um, just tears tears of joy, man. Sure. And uh, I didn't get to see mom on the first one. I only saw dad and you. Um, but this one was, uh, it was pretty special. Yeah. But like I said, I um, I was boohoo crying all, all week, man. Yeah. It was a pretty cool experience. And uh, America, 
football world, I can't thank you enough for jumping on board, um, enjoying our family the way you did, uh, supporting our family the way you did. One of the coolest feelings in the world, uh, seeing your family accepted and, uh, yeah, I love you guys for it. I'll, 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 I'll remember that week and what led up to that game probably more than I'll remember uh, most of what happened that game. There were a lot of storylines and a lot of things said uh, that my mother and my father said during all of their press conferences, the things that they did uh, leading up to that game that I'll remember more than uh, a lot of the third downs that we even had in that fucking game or a lot of the situational plays that we had in that game. And um, it's because of uh, how 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 much we have always uh, – knew they deserved the credit that they got that week. So, Yep. Well, Mom, Dad, love you guys, man. Thanks for always being there. Thanks for love always both being here. there. Um, all right. That's enough crying. We got to stop. I'm we got to stop, this, Trav. Man. I've got to stop crying. Like three weeks straight, dude. All righty. Let's get to the real question that. everybody wants to know. Did you take, did you really take Andy Reid to a Chainsmokers concert? Um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't take him there, but uh, <laughs> when he got there, I think I got him on stage, man. You got him on stage. We got we got them all on stage, and it was uh, it was pretty epic, man. Took one of the most memorable pictures that I'll ever I'll ever have. Uh, <laughs> the guy, the guys that That's I love to go one. to, the guys that I love to go to work with the most, and the guys that I love partying with the most, all Look in one that. picture, man. Uh, <laughs> I was only missing you. Uh, you're the only one I was missing on that stage, but it was um it was a uh, uh, awesome awesome time. Afterwards, uh, obviously, seeing all the friends and family is uh, is what makes everything, every single one of these games special, win or lose. But um, yeah, being on the top of the top of the mountain with those guys and then uh, celebrating with them, man, that was uh, that was good stuff, man. That was good stuff. Did uh, did you really dance to the Rocky theme? <sighs> I mean, yeah, the yeah. the chain smokers were the ones that were DJing. Um, yeah. My guy Alex asked me, "Do you think the Chiefs fans will hate, will like start booing if I play the Rocky theme?" And um, and I was like, "No, nah, man, that's 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 a it's like a national treasure, man." Are you Did kidding they boo? Me? No, they didn't. They uh, well, they, when they played it, I was I was on stage dancing. Yeah, and, so uh, they lo- they loved it then. I started hitting. Yeah, I started acting like I was Rocky, which I mean, we were the underdog. We were the underdog. We were not favored in this bout. Yeah, and um, so there was. I mean, we were Rocky in this fight. So yeah, I, hey, as man. much as much as Philly wants to claim Rocky all the time, you guys were favored in this, <laughs> and Rocky is never fucking favored. Okay, he is always the he's lesser. Always the of, he's always the lesser of the two. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was pretty. I thought it would it would have been funny if I if I did the little my impersonation of Rocky on on that thing, knowing that the entire week all the Eagles fans were throwing Chiefs memorabilia on them. That's what it was. Never a Chiefs fan. Well, there was one. You Chiefs called fan. it. You one called Chiefs. It. Who fan. even knows if that was really a Chiefs fan? He, you know what he, I mean. He he reps Chiefs hard, according to uh, reports. The rest, but... the rest of his uh, IG or the rest of his social, <laughs> um, supposedly. Yeah, that's what they say. Yep. But um, yeah, it was a uh, it was a fun after party, man. I uh, got to see a lot of a lot of friends and family that came and supported us. A lot of people from the Heights, like we said, man. You know, it was an epic game, an epic Super Bowl, and an uh, epic one for our family. Uh, we did miss out on one thing that could have made it more epic, though. Uh, that baby is still inside Kylie's belly. <laughs> well, that's how you know. The, the, the baby didn't come. Super Bowl didn't come. So we're in my matrix. I knew it all along. <laughs> I knew it the whole time. We are in my simulation, boys. <laughs> it would have. Uh, it's either I'm mine or Papa Holmes. I don't know. I was I actually rooting for Kylie to go into labor and have the baby at the stadium. <laughs> and I feel like that's very selfish of me, but that's that what I wanted to happen. Selfish. I don't know why I wanted that to happen. I, I fully believe that Kylie would have been perfectly fine and able to handle it. She does not like that I wish this happened. I've, I've told her. Um, <laughs> so, you know, whatever. It's still in there. You're going to have a new niece soon. I cannot wait to meet her. I think that was the point of like you hoping it would happen during the game is 
<laughs> so he not can. have to be there. No, I'm, I'm actually, I love being there for both of my uh, previous daughters. No, I would not have gone into the game. Kylie was under strict orders to not say anything if she was going into labor in the game. Well, it really weren't orders. She That was her suggestion. I should act like I... You came up with that? Yeah. No. All right. Kylie, we're patiently waiting. Her, no rush. Her, 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 direct, no rush. her direct quote is, uh, he was going to be useless to me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Kai. That couldn't have been in truer words uh, from Kylie right there. All righty, Tramp. Time to get to it. All right now. We made a bet. Whoever wins the Super Bowl gets to decide the fan base name. Um, oh, yeah. The fans have really been voting on this all year. Uh, for whatever reason, we have not we have not gotten to a fan base name yet. Yeah. And there's uh, always there's always that wild card that just gets thrown in there. Like, man, we can't now we can't we can't just we got to keep going doing the polls. We got to keep doing we not. Then it was jabronis. And then we had to kind of recircle back to. All right, let's just make it fun. And whoever wins this thing gets the gets to call it. So the two finalists were 92 percenters and the New Heights hooligans. That's right. We asked you guys to vote on the fan base name. And these are the f- official results. Uh, the two finalists were 92 percenters and hooligans. Well, the two finalists that were legally allowed to use, I think. Uh, <laughs> Trav, who are you going with? 92 well, percenters or hooligans? Well, boys, we had to take this headset off because Homage has already made the shirts. <laughs> oh, yeah, All that's right. right. I do have a couple of them. Are you wearing it? Is that how you're going to do this? You're doing this like... Uh, you're I doing this on. like... I can't hear you. <laughs> Reading it backwards because I am. It says hooligans with yeah, new heights no. underneath. This is actually this is like a baseball script right here. This is like my little league baseball shirt. Yeah, but, um, that's a good looking shirt. It is a good looking shirt. It's a good. It's a good name too. But I feel like it's already taken by soccer fans all across the world. Wait, <laughs> <gasps> the misdirection. Welcome oh! the new heights. 92 percenters baby <laughs> i love uh, it went the old you know what? Uh, high school uh college commitment route where i just i got actually one more shirt under here it's no i'm kidding you, <laughs> got the sweater <laughs> yeah, got the I got, uh <laughs> you got? i got oh man what the is, big yeti under there that's yeah, what you I got, got. The big yeti. yeah dude uh 92 percenters why did you choose 92 percenters it's it's so original to this show man i feel like hooligans was created because of something that was somewhere else 92 percenters is ours yeah you created up you created this nonsense (laughs) that we all kind of believed that actually came true and um that's where we're at right now in life we created this nonsense (laughs) and uh it's uh it's Panning out we spoke it into existence, true. though. We did. Just like 92 percenters, we spoke yeah. this podcast into and, existence. And it was the most demoralizing play of Super Bowl 57. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not quite every enough. Time, every time you guys ran it, we knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, I agree, man. I think it's a good representation of the show. Um, not only is it unique to the show, but it's like a... It's like half true, which is, I feel like, pretty much everything we say. And <laughs> it's true enough. It's a good represent. It's a fun, it's a fun stat that, you know, I think is, is, is a good feel for the show. Um, it's also uh, a, probably a higher percentage than Travis or I ever got in uh, school. So we didn't see a lot of 92% growing up. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. So it's fun to finally be a 92%er. There you um, go. Awesome. Good choice, yeah, Travi. Go. Shout out to the 92 percenters for hanging, Shout out to hanging all with guys. us all long, all, all year long. We love you guys. All righty. You know, that shirt is officially available at Amish.com right now. Right so now. for all you uh, 92 percenters out there, um, yeah, for anybody that enjoys uh, Made Up Statistics and this podcast, uh, if you want to support, feel free at Amish.com slash New Heights. All right now. All righty. No dumb questions, Trav. It's time. It is time. It's time for one of our favorite segments, No Dumb Questions, because there are no, there's no such thing as dumb questions. There's only... Dumb people. 
and you're looking at two of them. All right. Right now. This week's question comes from Coco number five. Okay, Coco. I like that. Who plays Travis and Jason in a Lifetime movie? No dumb questions. First off, do we deserve a Lifetime movie? Um, man, I feel like I feel like mom might mom might deserve a Lifetime movie more than us. You yeah, know, at mom this and dad. point, at this point, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I guess we'd be in it though, so we still got to cast ourselves. Yeah, we do, we do. We also All might right. need to cast Ed and Donna. Oh yeah, great point. All right, well. Who do you think would be the uh, the blockbuster uh, actors to play us? I think all week the big comparison with the brother game was Step Brothers. Step Brothers, obviously John C. Riley, Will Ferrell. I think that would obviously. I mean, that'd be great. I'd be. I'd honored. watch it. I'd watch. Oh it. Oh my gosh, I would. <laughs> I kind of want that to happen just it so matches. I could meet John C. Riley because you met him. You were in oh a HBO gosh. show with him. HBO, yeah, or right? Showtime. 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 My bad. Showtime. Sorry, Showtime. No, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, Moonbase Eight. If you haven't seen it, um, I have a. Uh, <laughs> that was one of the. That's where I knew I can't act. That's when I figured it out. I was like, this is not for me, man. These guys are unbelievable. Fred, uh, Fred Armisen. Um, who else was in that thing, man? Uh, it's Tim Heidecker. From, uh, um, from John C. Riley. or whatever. Uh, yeah. They're, they, when I tell you it was an all-star cast of guys that have been doing it since they were like kids, it felt like. Dude, they just had yeah. an uh, unbelievable ability to uh, hit every single scene perfectly when we did the scene over, it was nothing was said the same as it was the first take because they know they got that good take one time already. And here I am, the freaking Jamoke in the room, trying to figure out where, when my line is, uh, yeah. exactly how to say it. I'm saying the same freaking <laughs> sentence every single time we're doing a retake. And yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, it was very amateur on my end. And um, it's probably why I'm only in one episode because it, it sounded like the way they were doing it, they were kind of writing it as they were going. And um, they probably saw me acting and they're like, we can't do this all season long with this guy. We got to get him out of here. <laughs> so I, uh, I found myself uh, in one episode with uh, on, on Moonbase 8. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, tell me how terrible I was. I would love to. But damn, <laughs> it was an unbelievable experience, man. I was like face to face. It was cool seeing you on the TV. With, uh, with John C. Riley, And it was almost, arguably almost cooler off the field. Or off the field. Off, off the camera. Because those three are like they're they're like best friends. They're like really good okay. friends. They're singing Beatles together on an acoustic guitar. John C. Riley's just dun, dun, harmonizing. It was like a performance. I was like being entertained in the middle <laughs> of trying to be entertainment, guys. dude. It was yeah. uh, it was awesome, and um, what, uh, and it's well, a hilarious show if you guys uh, are into comedy uh, scripts. Well, hopefully anybody listening to this show is, but uh, yeah, right. I think, uh, you know, th that would obviously be a great cast based on a previous role, yeah. but they don't really look like it. So if we're going for looks, I got to say, uh, uh, you, uh, the basketball player, uh, Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. Valanciunas. Yeah. You, I mean, you guys look just like each other. This right? guy, I've been trying to get He's a picture with this dude. guy. He's big time. He's, big -time, big -time. He's a big time guy. He's a big time guy. He's, you know, the Lith Lithuanians, you know top guy yeah. he's their guy that's their guy that's their athlete of the year every year mm -hmm. um unless there's a hockey player that i don't know is from lithuania that's really good <laughs> um those are really the only two sports that you're getting out of lithuania there's not any my... lithuanian sweet uh sprinters that are uh towards the top mm, no nah, but i will say this when i saw jonas valanciunas get drafted to the raptors back in like 2008 yeah, I immediately realized we're Lithuanian <laughs> 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 because I felt like they just slapped my picture on the screen and said this guy got drafted. I was like, oh, man, it's crazy. Um, yeah. But Jonas Valanciunas for me. And then it would have to be who? Uh, Bert. Um, Kreshner. Kreshner. Kreiser. 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 Yeah. Kreiser. Yeah. Two, two bears, one cave. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll take that. Bert's a funny guy. He is. He would nail the part, I'm sure. Um, I always two bears one cave is a good is a, that's a good podcast too. If you're into comedies, it is. It those, is. Those uh, dudes are hilarious. I don't know. I always love East Bond and Down. I try and replicate Danny McBride a little bit in my uh, comedy. I can um, see that. <laughs> always been a big Danny McBride fan. 
certainly the year I had the mullet, I, it would have been a really good uh, casting for that. Um, everybody always says I look like Zach Galifianakis, which I don't know if you know this, but if you're white and have a beard, every other white dude with a long beard looks just like you. So uh, Zach Galifianakis, <laughs> we're the same. Uh, Dude, I'm thinking. I'm thinking more like uh, Jack Black. That's who I. I think Dude, Jack Black would be would killer in a role with you, man. They uh, they asked you guys. Me who? You guys have good like d- same delivery almost in, in, <laughs> in some some manner. They asked me who uh, would be my choice for halftime show at the Super Bowl, and I without question said Tenacious D. Tenacious you can't D. tell me that would not be a killer. They're not show. getting everybody hyped, but I'll tell you what, I'd enjoy it. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Um, I got asked this actually uh, during the media day was what what actor would play you in a movie, and um, I said Channing Tatum because I got a lot of Channing Tatum references when I was uh, in high school when I had like the baby face and the low buzz cut. Oh, would he was, play you? Yeah. Did I, I say like, that right? Channing Tatum's not playing me. I don't know what you're talking no, yeah, about. <laughs> no, no, no. He's playing me. Uh, I got a lot of those uh, comparisons I when I was a kid, um, yeah. especially when it was like uh, Coach Carter, him being the only yeah. white guy on the team, me always being the only <laughs> white guy on every basketball team I was on. Um, but yeah, I think uh, they said Liam Helmsworth. So would the Helmsworth brothers play us? I guess when Thor was kind of fat and had the beard, the one uh, – Marvel's movie where he was kind of out of shape. So, yeah, I, I, he kind of did look like me. I don't know. Sure. Sure. Uh, who's playing Who's playing mom and dad? That's a good one right there. Who's oh. the Who's the woman that played uh in Home Alone? I don't know her name, but I just, oh. I always thought that was mom. I always Gosh. thought that was mom. What is her name? That's a great call. Can we get some help from the directors? And she was constantly worried about you she left me behind at a rest stop one time. She did. Right? She did. They left me at a rest stop. Catherine O'Hara. That's Shout a good out to call. Catherine. Shout out to Catherine. Yeah. She's, uh, um, and obviously in way more movies than just, you know, Home Alone, but uh, the one that I remembered first. Uh, who's playing dad? Oh, gosh. There's only one answer. I'm not good. There's not only good. one answer. Are you kidding me? Who, Steven Seagal? That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's way too he's way too in shape, and I don't even know if that's a that's a good way to describe Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is not in shape. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. But, no, but that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. He's way too in shape to be dead. <laughs> we got to go more like uh, uh, John Candy or uh, oh or, uh, John Candy, John Candy or uh, R.I.P. or uh, what is it? Uh, John Goodman, <laughs> dude. John Goodman's like my favorite actor of all time, dude. If I, I could can have see, some, bo- I can see John Goodman. John Goodman and Jeff Bridges, which explains why I like uh, freaking The Big Lebowski so much. But um, dude, that's another one. The dude, of, were, the dude. There were that's a lot another of people one actually you. on the uh, on the episode we did with Dad. There were a lot of people saying that Dad sounded like Jeff Bridges, um, and he would certainly be honored to be played by the dude. Honored. Um, well, The Big Lebowski, one of the f- one of the most popular movies about absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, gotta love it. I mean, it's about everything. It's, it's, not, it's about everything. It's so it's much about it. everything that it's really about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think uh, who would play uh, Pat Mahomes and Jalen Hurts? Oh, uh, yeah, we, Jalen Hurts. For some reason, I'm getting a big Jamie Fox. Uh, <laughs> Willie Beeman, nice, right? Uh, I can see it. I can see it. Wesley Snipes would play AJ Brown without question. <laughs> I'm dead serious, bro. Look up the pictures. <laughs> I can see. Dude, him. looks just like I can Nino see him Brown. In his, especially in his looks blade, just like his Nino blade Brown. days. Yeah. Um, dang, who would play Pat? I mean, the obvious answer is Kermit the Frog. Chill out, man. What? <laughs> I'm not what? trying to be. <laughs> that's, that's what everybody says he sounds like. What, I'm not being mean about it. Oh man, there was one dude off of Revenge of the Nerds. That sounded like that too. He had the Avenge voice. The nerds. Oh my gosh, you got to watch it over again. There was one. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I forget now. the dude's name. It was way more aggressive than how Pat sounds, but that's who I think of when I think All right, of his voice, voice aside. Who looks like Pat? I know if it was a movie about Nick Foles, it'd be the guy from Napoleon Dynamite. Don't know his name. 
<laughs> Folsy, he played on both of our teams, so he would definitely have to make an appearance. Um, oh, man. That's a good one, man. There's not too many. Not too Tom, many. He's a unique looking there's man. The, there's the one off of uh, the old Disney movie Holes. Uh, he would. Ha- the, oh, I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking about. I don't know what he looks like as a full blown grown up. Not shy, but I gotta yeah. say, it, yeah, it looks. You're talking about the kid. Yes, the kid. I know he exactly probably, who you're talking about. I'm assuming yeah. he grew up and uh, looks the exact same. So, the Cleo Andy Thomas Reed. is the one we're talking about from Holes, and. Uh, um, if we click on it, we'll see what he looks like right now. Yep, that is him. Cleo Thomas is a good call. I think that's actually pretty pretty close. Well, there you have it. Who's playing Andy Reid? Eric Stone Street, right? He's already got Ooh, the... Ooh, Stone Street is... Yeah, he's right? got the voice. Dude, he already Stone plays Randy Reid. Plays that's Randy Reid in the skit he, with the Chiefs. He's, he's ready to go. Yeah, he um, is, uh, and he is, he'd kill it. Ooh, you know who else would be a good one is um, Al Bundy himself. Al Bundy to be, be Andy Reid? Big Ed. Yeah. Oh, Big Ed. Just from a purely uh, similar parenting style. <laughs> Ed O'Neill. My guy, Ed O'Neill, man. He could definitely play Ed Kelsey in a movie. He'd have to wear a bodysuit, but he could, he could play it for sure. Yeah, he's a professional. Nick Sirianni, Doug Peterson. Chip Sirianni? Kelly. I could see like a Ben Affleck playing uh, Sirianni. Ooh. It's got to be, yeah, yeah. I mean Ben Affleck's talented. Uh what uh who be Chip Kelly? Just Chip sh- Kelly? Like, like Danny DeVito? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Danny DeVito. Oh, dude, I'm trying to think of who What about Dougie P? Um Dougie P. Ooh, who would be Doug P? Sam Elliott? Mm. No. No. I was thinking more of the lines of like, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be real good. Jalen uh, Hurts, maybe uh, Michael B. Jordan plays with Jalen Hurts. I could see that. I, I could definitely see that. I think Michael B. Jordan has got uh, – and he looks the part, too. He's yeah. a very in-shape uh, human being. All right now. I see you, Michael uh, B. Lane Johnson? No, nah, we can't keep We can't keep going. John Cena? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's got too much hair. You got to go stone cold. Yeah, good point. <laughs> but, good point. But, uh, but he's not tall enough. Ooh, who plays Kylie? Who plays Kylie Kelsey? I don't know. You you take this one. I'm not. This one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not touching this one with a. I'm out of there too. With the, I don't want to get my ass beat. Right. There's a I'm there's out. a model that she used to get compared to constantly. Um. Um, I don't know it? her name. Anna Kornikova? No, it's not it. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be pictures do look very based. Um, ooh, who would be? Uh, oh, who is it? Um, is it Scarlett Johansson? I could see that one. No, no, it's not just Scarlett. Uh, it, it's no the one. I'm thinking who could play her. I'm the, I'm not thinking of the one you're thinking of. I'm thinking of who could play her in a movie. I think I don't Scarlett, think Scarlett Johansson. Johansson and Kylie look that much alike but that must be saying the wrong one then well that does it for no dumb questions just dumb people uh and i'm gonna get out of this before i get my ass beat so kylie we love you and uh nobody can play you but you (laughs) she knows the model that i'm thinking about all right all righty well guys that does it that's it for no dumb questions uh, please feel free to uh, offer your ideas for who would cast <laughs> please a tell us Kelsey oh my gosh. movie uh, teammates parents coaches whoever you think uh, would be in the movie and needs a role we look forward to seeing your submissions all right um, Trav we got one last thing you want to take it yeah we got one more segment and it is one last question we uh, oh. we got a lot of questions some not dumb some g- kind of dumb uh, actually, there's no dumb questions. So uh, this one is actually a really smart question, though. And uh, okay. all of you have been asking from a user on Reddit. Uh, one more chance to live. What are your plans for the podcast in the off season? We're all uh, trying to figure that one out. Not going to lie. Yeah, I think uh, so. We're definitely doing it, right? No, we're definitely doing it. We're doing yeah. it. I think uh, a lot of people have wondered whether we're going to keep doing the uh, podcast in the off season, we definitely are going to do it. I think uh, we're going to take a little hiatus now that the season's over, recharge the batteries, 
and uh, come back with some 92% energy, baby. All right, now. Uh, I think uh, maybe Combine would be a good time to start back up. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, buzz around the Combine, and that'd be an interesting one. But uh, we're going to take a little downtime for a couple weeks. Uh, and, uh, yeah, maybe we can sit down with some more players, do a little bit more interviews now that we got more time in the off season. And, um, yeah, we look forward to bringing you guys content, uh, year round, baby. Yeah. I think, uh, creatively we're still trying to figure out exactly what that looks like, but, um, you'll definitely see more of these kind of, uh, f- this kind of format where, uh, we're interviewing, uh, some of our friends or some of the people that we find to be the most interesting uh, people to interview. So yeah. um, we'll see what that looks like. And we'll keep you guys up to date throughout it all. We'll promise we'll, we won't let you guys uh, not know what we're going to do. That's for sure. Um, Jason, the big question for you, though. What's that? Are you going to hang it up? Is there a next season? Um, man, you, have to, uh, you have to answer I right now. I can't answer that right no, now. No, you have to answer right now. What do you mean? No. This is why we have the show, so no you chance. can tell every. One day we'll we'll answer that soon enough, I guess. Um, I don't know the answer to that right now, so I can't answer it. Um, I do know it was a lot of fun this year. I had an amazing team and time uh, doing this show with my brother. Um, so you know, we'll see. I'm going to let the batteries recharge. I'm exhausted, man. It's a long yeah. season, mentally, physically, emotionally uh, drained, and I'm going to let all that kind of recover before. Uh, we decide on that, but regardless, um, this one's been fun. It was an absolute blast, brother. All righty, Trav. Um, I got one more question for you, actually. Um, no, um, I'm done. Please, I'm, I'm not. No. I'm out of here. This one's a must because all right. All uh, right. one more. If uh, you know, winning the Super Bowl is great, and the one thing everybody looks forward to after it is the parade. Mm. Because who doesn't love a good parade? <laughs> um, <laughs> We've uh, been known to have some uh, moments at parades, both you and I. Um, as this episode drops tomorrow, you guys will officially be on your parade, potentially, or about to impart, depart on your uh, parade. What uh, Do you have anything planned? What are you, what are you going to wear? You got anything? You got any speeches ready? Um, well, I'm, we, got, we got two belts from the WWE now. We got world oh. championship belts. Pat had... Had one on uh, from this Super Bowl, and I still got the uh, the belt from the last Super Bowl that we won. So you'll definitely see uh, some championship belts. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to wear. Last time I wore a trench coat because it was 12 degrees outside um, <laughs> and, and, and light flurries. Tomorrow it uh, looks like it'll probably be somewhere around 40, 50 degrees, so a lot more manageable. Um, yeah. Hopefully we'll get the entire city to show up and show out, baby. Um, other than that, I really don't have anything planned. I didn't have too much planned last time, which is why it sounded like I was just scrambling and just <laughs> screaming and saying absolutely nothing but kind of saying, you know, uh, how much I appreciated the Chiefs. Um, and that's really what it's going to come down to is uh, when I get on stage, what comes to mind and what comes from the heart. I'm sure whatever it's going to be, it's going to be electric. You better believe it. And I think, I think that does it, brother. That does it. Well, that about wraps up the uh, post-Super Bowl episode of New Heights. It's been a fun run. It's been a fun season. Uh-huh. And uh, make, sure you su- make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and uh, so you can f- find out all the new videos as they drop. And uh, also make sure you, you're, you like and subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Um, also, the official merch is up and running. The 92% of shirt is available at homage.com slash new heights. You heard the man once again, new heights is a jukes original presented by wave sports and entertainment and brought to you by our friends at fireball fireball. That's cinnamon delight. Follow the show on all social media platforms at new heights show with one S and, uh, we'll bring you fun clips throughout the week from this episode and, uh, all the others. But, uh, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to this production all season long. We get a round of yeah, applause seriously. from all of us. You guys uh, made this easy. You made it fun, and uh, you made it absolutely amazing for us. And uh, we appreciate you guys big time. And shout out to the ninety-two percenters, baby. We'll see yeah. you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>